talk about different ways that lines can relate. Lines can be parallel or lines can be intersecting. And what do we mean by parallel lines? Parallel lines are two lines that never meet. So here's an example of two lines that are parallel lines. And I'm approximating this. That's basically what parallel lines look like. I can call this line P and line Q. And line P and Q are parallel lines. They never meet. And I can write that using this notation. P is parallel then to Q. So lines can be parallel or lines can basically intersect. And of course, two lines intersect in one point. So there we go. This is what two lines can do. These two lines, we'll just say they intersect at point A. So parallel lines, intersecting lines. Also, let's talk about some special lines called perpendicular lines. If two lines intersect, and once they intersect, right angles are formed. By the way, these two lines intersect, but right angles are not formed. This looks like an acute angle. This looks like an obtuse, acute, obtuse. Now let's look at an example of two lines that intersect just like the previous example, but right angles are formed. And we call those perpendicular lines. Now once again, this is simply a sketch of perpendicular lines. There we go. So I'm estimating right angles. Here we have perpendicular lines, and if I simply place that notation, I know we have perpendicular lines. They meet and right angles are formed. If I call this line, say, N and line M, I can write N is perpendicular to M. Those two lines are perpendicular. A little bit more about lines. What else about lines? We can talk about vertical angles and adjacent angles, and then we'll move on. Let's talk about vertical angles. Let's just take two lines, and let's have them intersect in one point. So here's two lines. By the way, do these appear perpendicular? No, they do not appear perpendicular, and in fact, they are not. Now let's talk about, this is angle X, angle Y, angle Z, and angle A. Let's talk about what we mean by vertical angles. When two lines intersect at a point, vertical angles are formed. Vertical angles lie opposite each other. In other words, angle X and angle Z are vertical angles. Angle A and angle Y are vertical angles. What's so interesting about vertical angles is that they have the same measure. So the measure of angle X and the measure of angle Z, those are the same. The measure of angle A and the measure of angle Y, those are the same. So let's suppose I know actually the measure of angle A. Let's suppose I know angle A measures, say, 103 degrees. Now notice I chose something that was obtuse, greater than 90, less than 180, so that this figure looks approximately correct. Let's find the measures of these other angles. If this is 103 degrees, what is the measure of angle Y? Angle Y measures the same. It is a vertical angle with angle, used to be angle A. So angle Y measures 103 degrees. Now, X and Z measure the same, but how do you think we can find either one? Well, notice that, let's see, 
let's just look at Y and Z for a moment. Y and Z are what we call adjacent angles. They share a common side, by the way. So Y and Z are adjacent, X and Y are adjacent, X and 103 degrees, those are adjacent, and Z and 103 degrees, those are adjacent angles. But it is true, for example, if you just concentrate on the 103 degree angle and angle X, notice a straight angle is formed, so I know the measure of angle X plus the measure of 103 degrees, that must equal 180 degrees, right? Because a straight angle measures 180 degrees. Because of that, angle X measures 180 degrees minus 103 degrees, so it measures 77 degrees. Because 77 plus 103 is 180. Now, if X measures 77, X and Z are vertical, so angle Z measures 77 degrees also. If you find the sum of all four of these angles, what should that sum be? It actually represents a full revolution, so that sum should be 360 degrees, and it will be.